The people of Edo State will on September 21st elect a new governor for the state known as the heartbeat of the nation. Now Robert Obioha is saying that they shall give the electoral agency the benefit of doubt. So he's on the record that the electoral umpire had failed on their promises on credible polls. Hey, but people don't be small, but uh, all right, my wonderful people, thank you all so much for joining us on today's wonderful news. If today is the first time of watching, kindly subscribe, like, comment, share, but don't forget to turn the notification bell to get notified whenever we drop our video to all amazing subscribers. Thank you all so much for joining. So, guys, let's proceed. The people of Edo State will on September 21st elect a new governor for the state known as the heartbeat of the nation on the account of the central location. So the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Prof. Mahmoud Yakubu, has assured the good people of Edo State that their vote will count. The INEC boss, who retaliated that INEC is not a political party, also promised that the pool will be free, fair and credible. So Opiora Roberts is saying now that they are going to give the electoral agency the benefit of that because it's on a record that the electoral umpire has failed on their promises on credible poll. That it is not in doubt that INEC had bongo some of election in the past, including their handling of the 2023 election. So since this is a one-off election, they believe that INEC will deliver a credible poll where the wishes of Edo people will be respected. He said that the vote must count this time <laughs> because the stakes are so high. The Mahmoud Yakubu led INEC has no reason to fail the people of Edo State because they will have cause to celebrate the electoral outcome. They are hoping that the election will be free from ringing, ballot snatching, voter suppression and intimidation, vote buying and other oddities associated with election in this part of the world. Although there are many political parties participating in a governorship election, the contest is a straight fight among three major political parties, the Labour Party, the PDP, and the All Progressive Congress. All the parties and their candidates are well known, and all of them are eminently qualified to succeed the incumbent governor, Godwin Obaseki, in spite of zoning and other considerations that tend to shape the outcome of election in the country, everything depends entirely on the people of Edo State and their preference. There have been intense campaign by all the leading parties and their candidates, including road shows, newspapers, and television adverts, as well as internet and social media campaigns. These are expected in an election like this. By now, the voters would have taken their decision on whom to vote among the major contenders. Without being immodest, this is an election that would have been much easier for the ruling party in Edo State to win if Governor Gordon Obaseki has wisely chosen which war to fight and those he could not dare at all. Now Bjorn is saying that it can no longer be so because the governor has attracted to himself and his party many political enemies. Obiora said whether the PDP perform in Edo State or not, that Obaseki would have easily delivered the party in this pool if he did not make many enemies for himself and the PDP. Why some people claim that Obaseki performed in Edo State? Others are of the view that he didn't do much in spite of huge expectation from the people. So many people felt betrayed by Obaseki, including his main supporter during the last gubernatorial pool. That gave him a second theme. When Obaseki consolidated his hold on power, he began to fight everyone, including known and imaginary enemies. His avoidable war with his former deputy and man, Philip Shaibu and Friday, plus other wars, may deny PDP victory in this election. That is what Obiora is saying. He said the war with his deputy is one war Obaseki should have avoided by all means. That he should have been more and man, Philip Shaibu and Friday. Plus, other wars may deny PDP victory in this election. That is what Obiora is saying. He said the war with his deputy is one war Obaseki should have avoided by all means. That he should have been more circumspect in fighting his deputy. That he should have deployed tact and diplomacy in engaging Philip Shaibu. But he did not. Rather, he threw caution to the wind that he won his second term election because Shaibu was with him. That can explain why they could withstand Adam Soshumole and his formidable team in the APC. Despite what critics say of the PDP candidate, Hasui Hodalo is one of the best candidates for the race to Osadebe House. 
he has good credentials and experience to govern a dose state. According to Obiora, he said they should forget the Dai tribe that he cannot speak his native language and other campaign talks and jokes. But coming from the zone, most favored for the poor is Asu Hodalo. Asu Hodalo should count on his solid achievement, plus the support of the incumbent governor. That come to the Labour Party candidate, Ulumida Pata. That he's boxing on the popularity of the party during the 2023 election as well as the obedience movement and his supporters. So he don't know if he has support among the godfathers of Edo politics in comparison to the PDP and APC candidates. Bira said the Labour Party presidential candidate Peter will be recent road work with Abata may have increased his popularity among Edo voters. Apart from being a newcomer to Edo politics and an outsider, that Olumida Bata has been zoned out of the contest. Although that is unconstitutional, whatever happened, he will make an appreciable impact in the pool. That he may be texting the ground for future acting. Should the obedient movement lend their full support to Akbata, that he might as well see himself in Osadebe House. He said, if there is one candidate much favored by the zonal arrangement of the governor's hip seat and the blessings of Godfathers, that person is no other than Mondo Oholo of the APC, that as a serving senator and a member of the ruling APC, that Mondo Oholo is a well positioned to clinch the seats. That he enjoyed numerous support from many godfathers of Edo politics, including the former governor Adam Sushumule, deputy governor Philip Shaibo, and former gubernatorial candidate Pastor Sagezi Yemu, and others. That the only criticism against Mondo Oholo is that he cannot speak too much. <laughs> he cannot speak too much grammar of English or that he is not well read of educated. They forget that the man is in the Senate. Now waiting Obiora they talk. He say what qualifies one to be a governor or even a president in Nigeria is YEC or its equivalent. That it does not require a university degree. So Mondobolo can get there if he gets the highest vote and certify conditions. That they can record that APC narrowly missed the seat last time because Obasiki attracted the sympathy of the masses. That Shaibu's intervention and strong support helped Obasiki to get his second term. Now that Shaibu has been pushed out by Obasiki, that huge support will go to Mondo Bobolo. That Obasiki has lost that empathy. <laughs> that he appeared to be alone in this race. People will pay him back in his own coin and definitely seek revenge. That in some of his campaign shows, Mondo Bobolo appears ready to go. That he is like a man who has long been prepared for the tax ahead because he is obsessed with getting the job done. Giving the people of Edo said the dividends of democracy, which have <sighs> reportedly eluded them under Basiki. What Obira is saying that Governor Gordon Obasiki would have easily delivered the party in Edo State if he did not make many enemies for himself and the PDP. That why some people claim that Obasiki performed in Edo State, that other people are against it. So most of the votes he would have gotten, <laughs> that he has lost it. He wouldn't have been involved in the fight with his deputy, Philip Shaibo. Hey, my problem is more better. So I would like to know your thoughts, your contributions, opinions are in our comment section below. We would love to hear from you. Once again, thank you so much for staying to us.